They do have them downstairs. Let me show you. I'll show you how to put it together. You know, you know what I bought because we. My These are charged. I, my friend and I couldn't find a price, so we went to grocery. Charged? We went to the gas station, and it's like one of those one hitters, and then you push the thing, and it ashes. Yeah, yeah, I know check that. I wish my normal one hitter did that because it's such a pain to ash. Yeah. So these are empty cartridges. You can fill them with whatever strain that and you, you like. you charge this? Yeah. This is the charger. It's just like an iPod. You charge it up overnight. It's a Oh my gosh, I'm so It's a little USB charger. <laughs> this, these are seriously <laughs> the greatest <laughs> thing ever. I think I have six extra ones I'll give you. And if I oh, don't Michelle. have enough for everyone, I'll, I'll do it. Wait, okay, so you charge this It's really getting them into it. I'm, I'm in love with this idea. All this stuff is going to Okay, so this is the charger. You char this is the battery part. I already talked about it. Wait, what's this? Is this what I'm, I'm getting? Show. Yes, I'm just showing them how to use it. Wait, oh, Michelle? Okay, so this is the charger part. So you get two batteries. I don't know if it's appropriate. Okay, it's appropriate. okay. 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 <laughs> so just like an iPod or anything else, once it's charged, then we're going to pretend okay. like it's charged. Right? Okay. <laughs> this is what is called the atomizer. Mm -hmm. This is the actual heating element. You see that little thing inside there? That's what actually heats it. Okay, so you put this in. Screw this into the battery once it's Christmas. fully yeah, charged. Is this what I see like people who are quitting smoking? No, that's an E6. That's an this is a cannabis E6. Oh. Exactly. They call it the cannabis. We're gonna rename it. But uh, that's basically you know. And then what do you put you put the, the bud in there or something? Nope. Or well no? this is for cannabis oil. Oil like for Michaela and okay. like what I use. Mm -hmm. Oil gives you the purest uh, intake system. So Kate, okay, you've got the atomizer and the battery now mm -hmm. connected. This would have a little dab of oil in it. Is that and that oil? Cannabis oil. Then you just put this in, that. and this is this. What's up? And do you? Oh, that's so crazy. This is like Christmas in heaven. All there's something in there. Do you smell anything? It's no. like Christmas in heaven. Is anything in that? <laughs> I this is what Christmas in heaven would be like. I put peanut oil in them. You want to go down, just so or you want to? Because we can't see so you can them. You have to clean it. Well, like here's the thing. Paper, what's the you you, you might want to these. You can jacket. use them over and it's over again. Usually, the oil comes completely out of this. Okay. Sorry, look at these but people once in a while, it. you'll have to, to clean it with a little <laughs> sinking or something. Oh, yeah, okay. And okay. the cannabis you put in there is not a cannabis that gets you high or alters your state. It you is can put whatever you want into it. Lava. Some people, because there's different strains specifically for different needs, so you may have something that's just specifically for insomnia or for pain. It's going to get a medical Yes, you have to get the license for the oil. For any to be able to.
It's really interesting being here. I've always wondered what it was like to be in a studio and on TV in LA. I used to live down here in Southern California when I was a kid, so it's always been interesting to me. Nice, yeah, nice. And here's exciting. Sam, so let's go find him. So I hope you don't mind the video I've shot so far. It's on and off, on and off. Oh no, she's in the other one. Oh, she's in the other one, sorry. Downstairs. Oh, downstairs. Oh, downstairs? Oh, downstairs. Sam. I really like that though, it's been fun using it. We're getting used to having it around and stuff, so. That way. <laughs> okay, those are coming more and more and more. Um, I think it's down that hallway to the left. Make a room down there? Yes. So you've been here. I heard that there's a beautiful young lady in here getting Hi. her makeup done. Look how pretty you look. They're making my, um, Hair stay down. <laughs> there you go. Look at Training that. <laughs> Here, hold this. I'm happy to meet you. Good to see you, sweetie. <laughs> I've been here since. Oh, they help you with that? Oh, don't get makeup on me. Oh, it's okay. Uh, here. The wardrobe. That's alright. Yeah, the wardrobe lady. We're going. <laughs> She's got you covered. Hi. I'm sorry. So how's it going so far? Good. Yeah, fun. Fun. yeah well, very fun. Well, we had the date. Have a tattoo too, huh? Yeah, they want to accept the tattoos. Yeah. We might have to, oh, we should cover that. They'll cover, yeah, they'll cover the tattoos on that. your hands and stuff. Do you know what? Yeah, did they cover it for you? Okay. No tattoos. Yeah. Just because you're not going to be here. Um, you know, our generation tattoos like, are accepted, well, right? Okay. They are, it's just a copyright thing, so we... we yeah, because like when the Michael, was it Mike Tyson? Yeah. The hangover, I've heard about they that. sued him because of the... Because yeah. they didn't pay them for... He already paid them for Isn't his Isn't that crazy? Though, yeah, yeah. Know? They didn't contract that he could never show that on TV. Either. It's just a... Oh, thing. your actual tattoo, the tattoo Yeah, the artist, artist. The artist did the work, so they can sue you for it. But I honestly think that if they paid for the work that you got paid, you should have contracted it if you want to get more money. Yeah. What do you think, it's Sam? I had never even heard that argument before, but... <laughs> well, we got to walk down Santa Monica Boulevard and... Nice! Why don't you guys look great? I'm so proud of you. You guys look so fantastic. You yeah, really you do. Nice. I'm glad we did because clothes. the clothes they had here were like... Mm, did I they wasn't try some I was, No, or? we just looked at it. I wasn't sure about a purple shirt and tie. Yeah, yeah. Thing. No, this looks great. This oh, you guys look you. really awesome. This is their shirt. It has a pocket. I bought one without a pocket. They didn't like my stains that I can't see on the shirt. Oh, well, mm -hmm. the same time? I guess so. Oh. Well, well this looks great. They see it's everything. It's a perfect color. Yeah, they, they, this is their job. Yep. They probably look at that. Well, just because we know it's going to So what are we, what, what's the plan here? Um, they're going to take us up in about 15 minutes. Um, we're in two or three different segments. So they it's just in case it does lift up a little bit mm -hmm. that you can't read the tattoo. Yeah, I think that's going to be fine. We're, we're never going to really see it. So so it's it's just, just so just to block it out. Okay. okay. Prizes to show them how far we've come in the industry. Because most of the time when people think pot, they think joints. You know, and it's a one point seven billion dollar industry now. People are like, oh, you have your seven-year-old on a bomb. Yeah. No, we don't. I am, so I can't wait to watch the show with you guys. 
You know what? Everyone's been saying that. It makes me feel really good. No, like, and I mean it in a good way because I yeah. believe in what you're doing. So thank you. So that's, um, that's thank why you I'm so much. To see mainstream here. I would love to tell as many people as we well, possibly could about. Aaron and Brandon are really two of the heroes in this movement. You know, with their daughter uh, Michaela, seven years old. I mean, she's surviving cancer by using the soil. And you know, you really have to give props to the people that have the courage and the strength and you know. The confidence to step up and, and you know change the way people think about what we're doing. You know, and it's you know when you see really nice, wonderful, down to earth boy next girl, boy next door, girl next door type people, it makes people stop and think about what they're mm -hmm. doing. You know, and maybe that is a possibility for me. Maybe that is an alternative treatment or something. So. Woohoo! It's amazing. You look awesome. Are gone. No tattoos. Yay! We're we're gone. Gone. Our moms are. Your hair looks fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> You guys are representing very well. I'm sweating. <laughs> she got hands. Are you guys all done? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, no, yes. You want to go back up? Well, thank you guys. Thank you. 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 Thank well, yeah. <laughs> Those are this, these will if you drop them on the ground, they go away on their own. The biodegrade. They just have to get the water molecule. And Everybody needs to make packaging like that. <laughs> yeah. Really. Have you seen the streets around this town? Oh, it's we're terrible, walking, isn't it? We, we can't afford to drive right now, so. <laughs> I know. So we're walking. We're like, oh, I wouldn't even want to be a bum here. Not at all. Hey, thank you for these. I'll be using these. Sure, my pleasure. You want the shampoo and conditioner yeah. since I don't have hair like you? Hey, we both get some. Check it out. That's really fun. Travel. Time. So tell me, tell me how's, how's it been going so far? What have you done so far? You guys got in late last night. Got in late last night. We and toured LAX and we hopped in a Navigator limo, Lincoln Navigator limo. Did you get video? Yeah. A little bit, yeah. yeah. Awesome. And we drove to our motel and it was so nice and we checked out the motel before we came and uh -huh. the room we were looking at online that we were like, we want that room, we got That's it. That's what we got. It was awesome. And it was, yeah. it was green. It was green. Perfect. So we just hung out at the motel. It was really nice. They had a nice courtyard there. The weather is fabulous here. They had great service. The people there, the concierge was really nice and helpful. And yeah. Fast. Safeway here is called Pavilion. It's weird. <laughs> Yeah, our, our there you go. Card work here. Yeah. You guys ready to go back up? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, didn't show up, so um, I told Michael just stand by because nine times out of ten something goes wrong and somebody doesn't show up. And I said just in that one percent chance or whatever, let's have you there. So just in case anyone has any legal questions, you know, we can answer them. So. Thanks. Sure enough. Sure enough. Oh, they're down this way. The green nose down this way, though. Doctor. Were you watching? Um, then film the show? Yeah. I've been here since 10 o'clock. What have you been doing? Just I had to do run-throughs. Oh. Run-throughs. Hey, that guy that was down there, his wife did get surgery for years. We have to get they room. installed a computer in her head. Yeah. Can you knock on the door, you guys? Can we come in? Sure. Yes. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi there. I'm just getting a little bit of video for Facebook. Hi. We're just chatting about this. I was just excited. Thanks, These guys are old friends. Yes. And you know, I'm, I'm, Hi. I think it's really fun. Hi. Sit down. I'm taking up this whole couch. We have the That's opportunity so to have kind of a nuanced discussion about this. Finally, Thanks for coming. As opposed to just, you know, I'm against this and I'm for this. It's like. Absolutely. These two have known each other for a really long time. They've both been in the trenches. They both yes. have seen every side of the issue, and they can talk about it in a nuanced way and not in a controversial or polemical way, which yes. is, I think is great. That's fine. So we're just we're so we're really just going over some of the script. So I'm glad you guys are here. I was going to come and do it with you. Did something I thought you might beat you up in the heat? Remember that? I, I remember it very well. Yeah. I wrote something. Or did, did yeah. Yeah. What year was that? Put it in your book. Yeah. Are you writing a book? This well, we're just talking. This is. Uh, what year was that? We won't. Oh, did, did, did that happen? Yeah. 1969. Right. Yeah. We, we were trying not to digress into old stories. That's always going to be a problem because we've known each other for so long. <laughs> so many well, I, again, but I do think that your camaraderie is really nice when it comes to you know the fact that let, let's talk about this for a second. I mean, you know. Is it is there a difference between giving this kind of treatment to a child versus to a grown up? If on on the, if, that, you, if there is, I'm is, curious uh, as to what it that is. That is my that is my concern. So if you want to look at a difference, that's and I think that uh, in in that regard, 
I wouldn't disagree with David, uh, but I think that in the final analysis, David, no, I won't speak for him, but he might come down and say, no, I don't think we should do that. And I think I would say in some instances, I think we should, but I'm, I'm hoping to convince David to come over to my side during the show. Well, let me ask this, I mean, this is <laughs> my question is, and as, just as a producer, my question is, if you talk about opioids that you're giving to, to people who are super sick, little kids get them all the time, right? Wouldn't they potentially have the same ability to turn on any addiction receptors or any epigenetic stuff that, that any other substance Well, that is a concern of uh, Mark Zion of Addiction Medicine and my concern and with the evolving brain chemistry that I think early administration of these drugs, there's a risk that we don't know about. Mm. And um, also I went up to the Packard Center where they treat very severe cancers, because they were at a whole session on whether they should use medical marijuana. And it turns out that there are a number of therapeutically effective anti-nausea agents. So in medicine, we go benefit to risk. What is the benefit? Is there anything that um, has equal efficacy? And what are the side effects? And I think early administration of cannabis or opiates. Uh, well, what about for the, yeah, but what about for things beyond just the nausea? Like the you know the sort of whatever the intangible sense of well-being or energizing elements or that whole I mean I've read a little bit about the science now finally and I'm starting to understand the cannabinoid receptors that both of you guys talked to me about and about the well, way they can the, communicate the, the endocannabinoid oh. system exactly exciting areas awesome. of research so if that so so is it that we need to do more research on that yeah because all of the protocols there's nothing been done on children so and that's it, part of the problem. Yeah. And, you know, you may, um, there's no data on the administration of cannabis to young people. And we have some concerns about the administration, uh, early administration of other drugs like the opiates. So I think that's an interesting point. I mean, that if there's any danger there, it's well, potentially, the, it's maybe it's understudied with the other here's drugs. A, here's the issue. Uh, the issue is that because of the government's policy, you have not had uh, the kind of research that I think both David and I yeah, would like to see. That is an accurate statement. So we yeah. agree on that is the government has, has uh, blocked the I think we got to get to that in the show because I, I, right. think I really want to beat up on the you're government. You're both men of science, right? Yeah. And yeah. both of you want to get to a place where we can have the same kind of data about cannabis as we have yeah. about Norco or Vicodin right. or whatever. And, and so what until wanna, we can study that, we can't really get uh, any. What I want to talk about in terms of the issue, because I think David is absolutely right. I mean, the, uh, I, that's why I was looking forward to this, because I felt that we would both be talking the same language and we might interpret things slightly differently. You know, we have to approach kids with caution. We don't have a lot of data, but what do you, and, and David is absolutely correct. I was talking to uh, an oncologist in Santa Barbara who uh, was a supporter of medical marijuana. He said, well, we rarely have to use it anymore uh, for the, the nausea. Uh, but the uh, thing is, is that there are situations where it is appropriate. I mean, I have, opt more for medical reasons. Uh, I also would not today, but I would love to attack the Medical Board of California because I believe they're incompetent. Uh, and if you saw the article on opiates on the front page of the LA Times on Saturday or Sunday, mm -hmm. you know, they, while they certainly chewed up those doctors who deserved it, they weren't too kind to the Medical Board either, but I think they kind of missed the point. Uh, but the, um, uh, so I've gone from saying nobody uh, under 18, except in rare circumstances, to nobody under 21, to nobody under 25, to nobody under 27. But that doesn't mean absolutely positively nobody. I mean, the question is, what do you do when you have somebody call you up and say, I'm a psychologist in the school, and my 14-year-old or 15-year-old or 16-year-old was driving everybody nuts, was doing poorly in school, and all of a sudden they turned around. And then I found out what it was. They were smoking marijuana. 
and you have them come in and you talk to them and you talk to them about the side effects and you you make a determination as to whether or not the therapeutic effects outweigh the potential risks and the potential risk that, that Dr. Smith is talking about is that we don't know what the effect of the cannabinoids are on the developing brain and there doesn't seem to be any argument that after the age of 21 or after the age of 23 there's not that concern but the data in my opinion is very soft and you may say look I want to err on the side of conservatism and I don't really have a big argument with that where my argument comes in is what do I do when somebody calls me up with one of these stories and they're a legit patient uh, and I know that it helps them. Do I just say, well, I'm afraid of the medical board and turn my back on them? I mean, sometimes well, I, think I do. that's the dialogue that needs to be engaged. Um, that what David is talking about is standards of practice. I don't prescribe medical marijuana. I'm in the world of medical marijuana. Right. It's all over the place. Right. The marijuana is essentially legal in the Haight Ashford. Sure. You know, videotape and the guy comes up and offers to sell marijuana on the corner of Nate and Asbury. Well, you can't get it there. Or well, no, on TV. <laughs> so the point is, is that, that that's my world. Right. But uh, if I, the people that I have that I think need medical marijuana are athletes that have muscle spasm. David has a practice in the pain. And they don't find that they get the same relief from marijuana. Mm -hmm. So right. if I actually believe somebody needs it, I refer it to a physician like David to utilize the practice. Right. Right. But in my world, there's a few Davids, mm -hmm. and it is harder to get a Blockbuster video card than a marijuana yeah. card in San Francisco. Yeah. They had a mm -hmm. big thing, and they, uh, they they signed up 1,800 people in four hours on the Cal Palace for yeah. And I'm happy to beat up on the doctors, which we coined a term called practicing minimalist medicine. Right. And I want to give you this, and hopefully maybe I can get you sure. to have us on uh, later. This is the American Academy of Cannabinoid Medicine. Our effort is to marginalize doctors that are practicing minimalist medicine. And in this regard, I not only criticize the medical board, but also the state legislature. You know, in the state of California, you have to have 12 hours of, of pain management and end-of-life care in order to practice medicine. I think if you're going to make more than 25 recommendations for the medical use of marijuana, that you need to have a certain amount of continuing medical education. Could be 8 hours, could be 12, could be 20. Um, in order to be uh, a uh, uh, certified cannabinoid medicine specialist uh, in our organization. You need to have 20 hours of continuing medical education, two years of experience, and you need to pass our written and oral certification. So it sounds like, I mean, I think the place we get to in this discussion is really getting to regulation, right, on both your exactly. sides. What, right. I, what, I, what I call it the standards of practice. Yep. And David is establishing standards of practice for what he does. And I believe that's the direction that we should go. But I am a by the book yeah. standards of practice because there is such massive misprescribing mm -hmm. in our society. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I'm not going to uh, tolerate misprescribing. He, and, and, and I have to say that. David is the best, but he is an outlier. Right. And the don't be best, afraid to share this on the show because it's important we have different points of view to make the even dynamic and of medical marijuana prescribed in our area is a joke. Right. It is a joke. And but the only other options they have other than medical marijuana to treat their symptoms are, are narcotic or opiate pain medications and things like that. I mean well, let me just tell you what happened. Let me just tell you what happened. Let me just tell you what happened. And I, again, I'm so biased by San Francisco. And a lot, it's a lot of people that are ruining it for people who are legit, yeah, right? No, no kidding. There they drive up to the Cannabis Buyers Club. Remember, San Francisco is an extremely liberal city. And these are all the people that supported the proposition. They drive up to the Cannabis Buyers Club, where they may have one or two medical patients. They get a load of marijuana take it out in the street, get in a big argument, a big fight, and it has nothing to do with medicine. 
Well, that's the black market that's been driven yeah. because of the. See, well, but market. I mean, the point of it is, is that that if you adhere to standards of practice, then you should say the medical system should open up. There should be trained doctors like David Behrman, and you cannot prescribe medical marijuana unless you adhere to these standards. Right now, there are no standards. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's. I think we have sent friends in just to go in and make sure that I, you know, I'm a grandfather and pretty, you know. So I, I kind of get it right. The ultimate the federal government making schedule two, then we could appropriately do the stuff. I, I agree that, and as a matter of fact, I've written several op-ed pieces that have been published in the local paper. Right. And I, so what I'd like to encourage you guys to have a healthy debate on the show. Just don't, don't, don't turn yourselves down. It's television. People want to hear both sides. They want it to be clear. And then come to this point at the end where it's like your collegial, your old friends, you both kind of are working toward the same goal, which is regulation, standards and practices, treating this like the potent drug that it is. I think also when we started out, it would be good to, you know, and I need to both have you a guys too, so. treat the cannabis dependence, the, the small group. That there is such a thing as cannabis dependence, yes. Uh, and I think, I think it's a mistake to ignore that. And I do think that these, I, I blame the legislature and the medical board. I mean, I had a, a friend of mine who was in the EA. Yes, who's, who's a lawyer, and she reported one of these doctors at the Cow Palace where you could see the line move, and the medical board said, uh, we don't investigate unless the patient complains. Right. So go right up and I'll let you do it. Can you get to pull it out this way? They did that because of the case that I won against the medical board when they tried to investigate me for no reason. And the appellate court said, if you want to violate a patient's privacy over their objection, you have to have a reason. Okay, I have to chat with these guys, you, and you guys can listen in and let me know if you have any thoughts so that you're not in limbo when you come out on the stage. <laughs> So the way we're going to start is Ricky will do a little bit of an introduction. Hi. Is it okay if she Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Can I brief them while she mics? Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. So Ricky's going to just do a little intro, and then we're going to say Aaron and her boyfriend Brandon have recently made national headlines with their controversial decision to administer marijuana to their seven-year-old daughter, Michaela, who was diagnosed last summer with an aggressive form of cancer known as T-cell leukemia. Then we're going to watch a news package. Take a look at their story. That's the CDS package that you sent us. We bought the rights to air that. Then we're going to come back. Hi, nice to meet you. And then she's going to say to you, Aaron, take us back to the day Michaela was going to come. My Kayla, not Michaela, right? Michaela, okay, okay, okay. Some people call her Michaela. I'll usually do the tie. She's your Kayla. She's my Kayla. I'm really sad. So delicious, by the way. I want to meet her. She's so cute. I wish she could have come. She wants to. She's so great. Well, she'll she'll come back when she's feeling better and and you know her immune system. Which will be, we're done with our, we're done with our party email. I'm and sure you've read up on this in a little way. You're back anytime you want. We love that. Research that research that research that research um, and the drawing is amazing. And she's going to send the drawing for me. She's so sweet. So then we have those three family pictures that you guys gave us. I'm listening. Did you see Yeah, there's a lot of things going on. Yes, he's great. I, I, so I, I'm right. in the audience with you. Let me suggest to you guys a lot of props. Yeah, no, you're amazing. This is going to be such a good show. I'm so excited. Thank you. Really, I'm, it's my pleasure to have you. No, thank you. You're going to be great. And I know that you're going to get your own Well, I Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm excited. I've been demoing fun stuff. Yeah. I mean, I've never seen my guys so into a demo. I'm like, I don't know if they're like hitting on Cheryl for something. No, it's great. No, you should totally do it. Are you kidding? I have, they all have crushes on you now. Can you do that? Can you do that again, actually? I'm going to pull out my phone. I just think it's funny because that is really where I keep it. This footage isn't going to go anywhere scary that's going to get me in trouble for not seeing there with you guys. Or anything, right? Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> and not before we air the show, like the thing, right? Any guidelines you give us? I just okay. want to for our That's great. That's fine. I just want to make sure that my EP does Check your batteries out, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, so Aaron, I'm bringing you back in. That, okay, so we're going to keep going. So we're going to watch your story. We're gonna, you're going to take us back to the day Michaela was diagnosed. We have all your family pictures ready to be pulled up. So anytime you're talking about it, or we can, you know, the, our stage manager will be listening and our director will be listening, and they'll have those gorgeous pictures of her that we have. The angel, she has the angel headdress and one of her sisters. Oh, so cute. Can I ask you something? Yes. 
Uh, like everybody, I have a book. Is there a chance that Ricky will hold up my book? Not on this show. Okay. Because I didn't know that ahead of time, and we already are way over. But I have all your info now, and I have a feeling okay. you're going to have a chance. And one other thing I wanted to mention. I have a guest for you that you should think about named Tanya Davis, who uh, was a victim of domestic violence and, and is in a wheelchair, and now she has a, a parathyroid problem, and she has deposits of calcium in her brain, and she's trying to get, uh, what she wants to do is to have Obama reopen the independent new drug program, which started in 1978 and was closed in 1991 by the Bush administration. What is that? And okay. I she no, I, she sounds amazing. I'd love to talk to her about her. I'm only, I don't mean to rush you, but I have to get them prepped before we go on the stages. I, I just wanted to mention that. No, 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 that's I have an agenda myself, and that was my agenda. <laughs> and you are welcome, and Tanya Davis, and I, I'm, I'm I'll, serious when I tell you I will reach out to her. And I'll email you and give you That would be perfect. Because there's a video that, where you can see her in action. I've already and see sent, whether. Tanya's on my advisory board, I've already sent it to Okay, perfect, yeah, so we know we won't, we won't neglect it. Okay, so then, then Ricky's going to say to Brandon, I know both you and Aaron are medical marijuana patients as well. Do you think your familiarity with cannabis informed your decision to give it to Michaela? So then you're going to say, yes, we knew, you know, you'd tell me what you told me. What would you say to that? You just confidence in it um, um yeah i'm confident in the decisions we made treating her with cannabis 100 percent confident um it's very effective on all of her symptoms that she experiences from chemotherapy and I have the same thing with one it that's helped her uh blast go into on. remission which the chemotherapy wasn't doing a good enough job of that we were being yeah, talked to about bone too. marrow transplants and full body radiation and um we got her the cannabis oil, and shortly after that, about three days later, the, her lymphoblast count went to zero. One week later, it went to zero and stayed there ever since. That's incredible. Make sure you say that. That's a, yeah. Because I think... She actually I, went a month without treatment. She had a break from it due to dapsin, causing her methemoglobinemia, I believe. I won't say that online. I won't try to say that oh on TV. Oh, my goodness. That's a But word. there was an antibiotic that caused her some problems, and she had a month off of chemo, and she didn't even relapse. Wow. I mean, I think that's a, I, that's what part two of this show is going to have to be in a few months or years when we know about the actual cancer-fighting effects, which would be totally different from any analgesic effects and be a different conversation if there are indeed benefits. There are properties that are... That's interesting, right? Yeah. Yeah. We need to research that. There's a white paper where they said there was a potential there, but... But we can't, we haven't, we don't have the There's data yet. There's been a yet. lot of studies. There was a great paper that came out of the University of Wisconsin, which appealed to make us on Wisconsin, that talked about the studies, and I called him up, I, I wrote an article in the paper, and a guy came in and said, well, I got pancreatic cancer. And I said, well, I, I don't think, I don't know what to tell you. So I called up the people at Wisconsin, I mean, like I was nuts, and they said, you know, this has been done in tissue culture and in mice. I said, I know, but I got a patient, what do I tell him? I finally got him to talk to me, but, you know, that, if you think, yeah, if this is in the same ballpark as, as kids, and even more so, that, it, but this is really, Really it needs to be okay, Grant. So then after we do that, that we're going to go to break. Then you guys are still with us. It's segment two. Yes, it's three segments, so it's the most of the stuff. Um, yeah, so then we're going to say we're back with Aaron and Brandon, whose seven-year-old daughter, Michaela, is battling leukemia and legally using medical marijuana to deal with her symptoms and side effects. Yeah, they, they said we're, we're, we're the National Institute of Drug Abuse. Now, yeah. friend and advocate Cheryl Schumann, who starts to be publicly in favor of medical cannabis during her own battle with her cancer. So then you guys are all going to be sitting together. Is used Cheryl's going to, Ricky's going to say to you, Cheryl, tell me about what happened after yeah, you were diagnosed with a very cancer. And we're going to see those two pictures you showed us. We're going to see your yeah, tape. We have some footage of that time. Him. We'll show. So you'll talk to Ricky and yes, Ricky. He's been, he's, see pictures. I, I think then how did you end up meeting Aaron and Brandon? Uh, so then you're going to tell us. Because we have to have the audience he understand and maybe how we got to. Otherwise it makes no sense. Then we're going to go into the demo. Mm -hmm. So Ricky's going to say something to you to the extent of, Cheryl, can you clarify that patients don't need to smoke cannabis? They can vaporize it, eat it, or even take it in a capsule the way Michaela does. Mm -hmm. Can you show us some other ways they can consume cannabis? Mm -hmm. And then you're going to get up and walk with Ricky, and you're going to show us everything. Oils. So you need to do the, the, the part I was on. I was about that she's I'm going to try really hard. <laughs> and I'm laid back. You're just, you guys, you're going to speak, you're the mom. Do, you're the beautiful you mother who is doing the right thing for her child. You're going to speak about her child. Nice. You know what I mean? 
you're the dad, you're the bulldog, you're protecting, you're giving stats, you're, like you guys I are, per I mean, it's perfect. Like, you know, <laughs> and I can see it. So you protect her, she, she protects, protects Michaela, you protect them as a family. That's this kind of the That's story that we're telling. <laughs> right? So, so once you, so you're going to take us through that stuff and then Ricky's going to say, up next the debate continues, plus exclusive home video of a day in the life of seven-year-old Michaela. That's next, okay? So then we're going to come back with that. We're going to put the Martha Stewart in our room. After, you'll see it after. There won't be any graphics on the show. In other words, you should be the way they should So then we're going to say, we're going to come back and we're going to have Cheryl move to the audience. You're going to be on stage for the first, then you're going to move to the audience. These guys are going to move to the stage. Well, look at that. And we're going to be seated. These guys will be telling us where to do Oh, yeah, 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 everything. Don't worry. And so Ricky's intro to this part. She's going to say, today we've been talking exclusively with parents caught in the middle of a controversial national debate, giving medical marijuana to their seven year old daughter who's battling leukemia. What is life like for a seven year old cancer patient who takes medical marijuana? Aaron and Brandon gave us an exclusive look into the world of their daughter. We're going to watch the video you took, which is fabulous. You edited it We edited it. It looks really cute. Take a look at their home video. Yes. Then we're going to come back, and this is where you guys come in. So you're going to be pre-seated on stage with these two. And after we get a little bit of their home video, you're going to see their gorgeous daughter. You're going to see their home. Then Ricky's going to come back and do the stuff that I said to you. I want to introduce you to two seasoned experts who are on opposite sides of this issue. You're going to talk about it. And then it's just really going to be a conversation with all of us. The audience may have a chance to ask some questions. Um, so be prepared for that. But How fun. How exciting. It's mm -hmm. going to be great. And cool. this is going to open up a really big national yeah. debate. I mean, we're up at 99.5% of households in the country. I hope it does, too, because and a I lot of people need to be able to talk about this. And it needs to be yeah. changed so something can be done with I, it. I'd like to suggest one thing. Sure. sure. It, it's possible that the audience is going to portray... Uh, David as the bad guy, and he's not. We're not going to let that happen. Okay, oh. I just want. That's what I want. You know, the host can influence things yep. a lot. I think, you, you know, the the concerns that David has are very valid. I have the same concerns. I sure. think. I, I'm not sure if we do come down on different sides of this issue. If we do, well, and, and it's only you, after a great deal of thought. And what you just said to me, and we're going to, the debate that we just had 20 yeah, minutes ago, we're going to have that in studio, and then I would appreciate it. If you feel that he's getting bullied for no reason, please say just what you said. Please well, I, say. I could say this as a mother who treats her daughter with cannabis. I sat here and I listened to it, and my heart was dropping at first a little bit because I'm like, no. Because I, I fear that they're going to take my daughter's medicine from her, and I fear that. But when I was listening to you, and then you started going on and talking about how, you know, they can't study it. And that's not doctor's fault. Right. And they shouldn't look like Our a bad guy. Our should be able to study it. Yeah, and I'd love to, to have you say that. You'll be my full time. That's exactly what I'd like to have you so, say. I mean, if I could just this take is what's been going on in this yeah. room, that would be fabulous. And my hope Here's is that you know, 10 years from now, we can all sit in this room and look at studies that have been sanctioned by the government and go over the data together and come to some conclusions. Because that's all everybody think, in this room wants. I think doctors would be all for studying. You give them something new to research. You know, give them something new to work with that nobody else has been able to yet. You know, right. I'm tired of working with But it's not going to be all that. Oh, no, I know, but it's going to be the the people that are right. abusing the medical marijuana law. Yeah. To divert it. Mm -hmm. To I mean, well, how would you like to take your daughter? Well, to cannabis the parking is something. Lot of cannabis is different than house. a lot of medications that you're used to prescribing because cannabis also has a social side to it. It has a recreational yeah. side. There are recreational and a lot users, of people, just like alcohol. I mean. Now, the, you know, doctors prescribing cannabis for, for is nothing new. Use. In the 1920s, oh, no, it's there were medicine. 3 million prescriptions a year that contained cannabis written by American doctors. You're, you're really 3 million. So that's a hard one. I understand your point. That's a hard one Thank because... You.